It's not as long of a game too. Uh, it's less less time per quarter. young Charlotte Hornets taking on the preeminent team in the NBA the Chicago Bulls and the Hornets a relative newcomer both the franchise which was started in 1988 and the player they led this team to its first ever playoff appearance in 93 making it to the second round they look to knock off a team in the Chicago Bulls that we find in the midst of its first championship three-peat. A powerhouse ball club, if ever you saw one. And as always, this Bulls team revolves around the Hall of Fame talents of Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen at shooting guard and small forward, respectively. But if the Hornets are to find an edge in this one, it would have to be on their front line. With the athletic and imposing combination of Larry Johnson at power forward and Alonzo Mourning at center. They'll need to have big games if the Hornets are going to win this one. And as we look at this Bulls team, of course, we mentioned Michael Jordan and Scotty Pippen. The 6'2 B.J. Armstrong at point guard. And up front, Horace Grant and their center Bill Cartwright. The lineup for the Hornets, 5-3 Muggsy Bulls running the show at the point guard. Kendall Gill in at the shooting guard. Swingate in at the three, the small forward. And their talented young front court tandem, Larry Johnson out of UNLV and Alonzo Mourning out of Georgetown. The guys, if you were trying to in a nutshell, describe what made Jordan so special, what would you say? Well, a lot of attributes. I mean, his competitive spirit, his unique physical gifts. I mean, the guy was a tremendous basketball player. You add on top of that, tremendous athleticism as well. He's a guy who could jump. He was strong. Tremendous drive and focus. I just think it was his combination of basketball skill and athletic excellence. And the fact that he was just so driven. I mean, you, you, you touched on it, Clark, but he, that guy I wanted to win uh, more than anything else in his life and he approached every single day as a competition and he drove himself and his teammates so hard that he just elevated everybody uh, to new heights and there's the rejection and the seven foot one Bill Cartwright extends for the rebound it's up and there's Michael Jordan the assist by Pippen Great feed there from Scotty. You know, he was really the primary ball handler for the Bulls in that triangle offense. Muggsy Bogues came into the NBA as the 12th pick of the 87 draft, taken by the Bullets, almost his hometown team, given his Baltimore roots. But the Hornets snatched him up in the expansion draft the next year. And Clark, for a player of his size to last as long as he did in the NBA, 14 years, oh, I mean, that's really something. He was such a unique player, an incredible defender. Back. Oh, so shit. Strong, My defense is so bad in this game. Floor, he'd get underneath you and put a, a ton of pressure on the ball. Here's Jordan following the bucket by the Hornets. Grant outside. to Cook. Takes it up. And the rebound goes to the Hornets. Hill, the pass to Wingate. Armstrong gets the rebound. Chicago trailing here. Upside Pippen. Cartwright working against Morning. Cartwright misses. Guys, Alonzo Mourning was in this league a long time, 15 years to be exact. And of course, he overcame a very serious kidney disease to return to the NBA and win a championship with the Heat in 2006. Yeah, and he uh, went on to play in the All-Star game seven times during his career. Five of them were with Miami, the other two in Charlotte. But, uh, Miami was really where he was in his peak. And in fact, he was the first player in Heat history to have his number retired. Johnson against Grant. It's Pippen on the wing. Six to shoot. Here's Cartwright. It's all in. Hit that on his own wing. Morning's got four rebounds in this game. They got that rebound, but this is not how oh, they start the game in terms of hitting the glass. 
Yeah, it's about time and got a rebound. It's time to get physical here in this game. Guys back and forth this first half. Dang. 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 Well, I didn't have to go head to head with him too much, but I didn't hear him talk a whole lot. I knew he was extremely competitive and a big time point producer. That's for sure. Uh, I didn't get the wrath of his trash talking because by the time he was starting to do that on a regular basis, I was sitting courtside with the microphone. That's a tough pass to make on the interior. So close to the hoop. Not much spacing. Good foul. Make him earn the free throws. Don't let this team dunk. I like that. That's a smart foul. I mean, it's a lot easier to dunk it than it is to hit two free throws. Make them earn them at the strike. First one falls for him. The Hornets were a very tough opponent for the Bulls in the 92-93 season. The Bulls won the season series, but it was close. It was 3-2. to two. Yeah, and Charlotte matched up really well with them, guys. It was very much a strength-on-strength strength situation. I mean, the Hornets had pieces in all the right places to take on the Bulls and give them trouble during that season. Here's Newman. It's a look, and he chooses to bank it in. Here's Jordan. They lead by one. Here's Paxson. Jacks up a three. That's good. Paxson, a dangerous long-range shooter, made some big shots for this Bulls team over the years. He passes to Newman. It to morning. Stolen oh, by Pippen. Shit. Yeah, just a nightmare start for them early in this game with the turnover. Well, three turnovers already, Steve, as, as you've documented. I mean, it feels like tip off was seconds ago, and they're not holding on Damn. to the ball. Nice time to use that foul to stop the layup. You know, if you can save just one point, that foul was the right move. And the second free throw, good. Had a miss on that trip, but still made this a two possession lead. Shot from the top of the key. Nice shot by Bennett. Heaves it up. Short. Can't get it to go. Oh, off the rim. Well, it's been a high-scoring competitive game through the first quarter of play. Neither team able to build much of a lead up to this point as we start the second quarter. And the individual awards for Michael Jordan, just staggering. I mean, staggering. Five-time league MVP, a 14-time All-Star, nine-time first-team All-Defense, and an NBA record six finals MVPs. And Charlotte, looking at who they've got. Newman is out there with Johnson. Then it's Bogues. Then there's Gaddison. And it's Curry in a shooting guard. Now here's Jordan. Now Purdue, and stolen by Bogues. And that's what made Muggsy Bogues such a terrific ball thief. A great combination of instinct and quickness, not to mention that low center of gravity of his. Passes to Gaddison. Bogues against Paxson. Six on the shot clock. Unloads from nine, and the basket by Curry. And for Jordan Clark, you know, he, he could have had a lot more awards if not for his two retirements in the midst of his career. Why do you think, see what's bringing you into, why do you think he needed that time away from the game? Well, I think he was burned out, Kevin. I mean, you, you think of the, the focus on him, the constant scrutiny and attention. And I think he, he just got, kind of got worn out from it. He had won three titles in a row in Chicago at that point, so he decided to step away. And I think that rejuvenated him because he came back stronger than ever. Here now, the Hornets following the three-pointer by Michael Jordan. This one for three. No good. So the Bulls will take it the other way. And here we go. Paxson with the ball. And again, it's the Bulls from deep. Paxson. John Paxson spent his college days at Notre Dame. Nice. But he had a very Great there. high school career in my home state. He grew up in Kettering, Ohio. Well, he was drafted 19th by the Spurs in 1983. And signed with the Bulls a couple of seasons later. Providing them with some Ooh. blood shooting over the year. The Bulls leading by five. And it's rejected. 
Out of bounds. And they'll keep possession. Chicago making some changes. Bill Cartwright, he's checked in for Purdue. Pippen comes in for Michael Jordan. And B.J. Armstrong has subbed in for John Paxson. Then for the Hornets. Morning's checked in for Gaddison. Green comes in for Johnson. And Bennett subbed in for Bowes. Goes up. Hornets trail by five. And here's the fast break. Good ball movement. Outside curve. Poked away. Here's Armstrong. It's a five-point game. Now, B.J. Armstrong, 6'2 shooter, grew up in Detroit. And the 18th overall pick by the Bulls in the 1989 draft. He was the starting point guard in the 92-93 season and a reserve before that. Charlotte, no good that time either. And here are the Bulls now. Here's Pippen. Lays it up, and despite of the excellent defense at that, Pippen's got his second bucket of the game to go. You know, talking about B.J. Armstrong, to follow up on what you said, Steve, reliable, durable. At one point, he played 577 straight games. I mean, those were things that I thought epitomized who he was. And he was an NBA All-Star in 94 and a really consistent spot-up shooter and an underrated defender, too. And it's the Bulls with the ball. After the basket by Charlotte. There's the triple. Armstrong gets Probably the not, but maybe. He has six. You know, B.J. Armstrong's right there among the all-time see how it goes. three-point shooters. His 42% three-point percentage has him at number nine on the career list. Number one is somebody named um, Steve Kerr, I think. <laughs> <laughs> ah, well, I'll tell you what, Clark. It helped playing with guys like Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen for a lot of my career. A lot of wide-open three-pointers because of the attention those guys got. I'm sure B.J. Armstrong would tell you the same thing. Horace Grant, he's checked in for Chicago. Jordan comes in for McCray. Charlotte also making some changes. Gaddison, he's checked in for Green. Wingate comes in for Newman. And it's Bogues in for Bennett. There's the pass to Wingate. And here's Bogues. Still looking to get on the scoreboard. Down to five on the shot clock. Court right. It's called for the reach. That is his first foul Fucked of the up game. There. I got to give it up to Muggsy. I mean, standing as small as he did, he just was so effective out there and a great defensive player. You know what? Even as a bigger right, guy need myself, to get this point he's got to have tremendous respect for Muggsy. I mean, he was so strong for his size that his oh. almost was an afterthought. Kurt gets the whistle for blocking. That is his first foul of the game. That's the right call there. He tried to take the charge, oh, wait. but he did not have position. No, he didn't, Steve. He was out of position and a clear block. Here's Armstrong. A three-pointer, no good. Two for one opportunity here if they want it. That's what I'd do. Make sure you get a couple of shots here to close this quarter. The Bulls leading by six. Even numbers. And Curry picks him up defensively. Here's Armstrong. Six points for him. It's Jordan on the wing. Bogues defending. No good from Jordan. So far, he hasn't made much of a contribution at the offensive end. Outside for Curry. He passes it to Gaddison. Jumps up. Oh, shit. Nice team Reject. The final possession. And so we conclude the first half. We'll see you in just a moment, live here from Chicago. And now the start of the second half. Neither side jumping out ahead through the first two quarters. Michael Jordan, there's not much you can say about him that hasn't already been said. I mean, you won't get much argument naming him the best player of all time. Great athletically and in terms of basketball skills. Some would say the greatest in any sport. Six titles and the most decorated player in NBA history. B.J. Armstrong is out there with Michael Jordan. Then there's Pippen. Then there's Grant. And it's Cartwright in at the five. That's the five out there for the Bulls. 
And now here's Pippen. Pass to Cartwright. Morning's there. All right, man. And it's morning with the rebound. Well, All right, Rico, you two men. We'll see if, if we see you later. We do, but if we don't have a good weekend, man. And I think there, there's some truth to that, guys, because it's so difficult to compare players of different eras. Oh, shit. Yet, uh, I think we'd all agree that uh, Michael was the best. I mean, he, he was probably the greatest player of all time, and I haven't met many people who would disagree with that. On the mark from 16 feet out. Morning's got six. Good team play there. You move the ball until you find the right shot for the right person. They're well-oiled machines, Steve. I mean, working extremely well as a cohesive unit. Every pass delivered on time and on target. Uh, a lot of ball movement and player movement. It's a thing of beauty. Grant, that's good. And we see Horace Grant, the third scorer for this close team after Jordan and Pippen. Nice feathery touch for a big man. Well, at five foot three, Muggsy, still the shortest guy ever to play in the NBA, but he made up for it with speed, toughness, and strength. And he was just an incredible defensive player. And that he was, Steve. I mean, tough as they come. He was raised in inner city Baltimore and actually got the nickname Muggsy because of his physical style growing up. He was trying to mug guys out there on the court. This is not the start to the second half they want. Coming out shooting just one of four. Oh! Boy, that dunk got everybody off their seat. Oh, they're loving it, aren't they, Steve? Well, how could they not? I mean, he put the cherry on top of the Sunday on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Bowes. Looking for his first bucket of the game. Charlotte calls timeout. They've been very untidy with the ball here. You commit turnovers when you try to do too much or you force it. They need to focus on making the simple play, good passes, and moving the ball around. Steve, you were one of the fortunate few who played with Michael Jordan. How was he as a teammate? Well, Clark, he was incredibly demanding. I mean, he was such a leader, and, and he drove everyone so hard in practice on a daily basis. And it was not easy. I mean, he would get on you if you Oh, didn't shit. Slam it again. So Bam. Really forced everybody Two in a row. Level of their game. I think he wanted some one-on-one -on -one time with the rim. He wasn't letting that thing go. No, a little, little pose up there hanging on the rim. Just kind of showing off a little bit, Clark. Here's Gill. Pushes up. Here's the block. And Jordan was no slouch as a rebounder. I mean, over six per game was his career average. And he was fine oh. the way up. Two free throws now for him. Scottie Pippen had a career most guys can only dream about. Guys, in his 17 years in the league, he made it to the postseason 16 times. Yeah, he's just a winner. That one is no good. And, you know, his teammates, guys, I used to watch it every day. Jordan and Pippen would push each other so hard. They loved to compete in every single drill. And it really elevated the play of the entire team. Now, here's Bowes. Passes it to Gill. Here's Newman. Johnson with a screen on Pippen. To halt the run. The Bulls leading by nine. He feeds it to Slow down, slow down. Okay. And it's going to be a three-second call. What the fuck? Williams, he's checked in for Chicago. What are you doing? Jackson comes in for Armstrong. Gaddison, he's checked in for Charlotte. Then it comes in for Bowes. Hornets trail by nine. That's on my computer. What the fuck? Then at the pass to Johnson. Oh, shit. Here's Newman. Guarded by Pippen. Here's Bennett. Knocks down the three ball. He's got seven. Well, Michael Jordan impacted the game in so many ways, including in the fashion category. Remember the baggy shorts uh, that eventually became popular? He was really the first guy to wear them. Yeah, you know what? And he said it wasn't so much about fashion for him, but rather function because it gave him a chance to hold the hem when he rested. I had not heard that, but I guess it makes so sense. So, Grant, get it back. Fucking dunk you. Bang you. He always wear under his Bulls uniform, so I see where uh, he had nice. a couple of reasons for those long shorts. Here's Bennett. Seven points in the game. 
And the Hornets call time here. You got to keep everybody on the same page. They need to get their heads together. That's the goal. Larry Johnson was just an absolute force when he entered the league. Hit the ground running in 1991-92. Averaged 20 points and 11 boards. Here's Bennett. Throws it up high. Trying to go big for the alley-oop, but good defense got in the way. The opening was there for a split second, but he didn't get it there in time. Hornets trail by 11. Back to LJ, back to Larry Johnson. These Hornets took him number one overall. He gave them just what they needed. A very, very tough score. Not only a tough physical presence, but tough-minded as well. Even though he was undersized, guys, he was terrific on the offensive glass. Oh! oh. Far. Larry and Johnson far. with the big time finish there. Get out of the way. Jordan kicks to Williams. Here's Paxson. And two free throws coming up as he misses that one. Drawing the whistle and a lot of contact there. The first free throw is good. So both teams changing it up here. Both free throws good from Paxson. Here's Bo. The shot will not go. And here at the end of the third quarter, it's a double-digit ball game. Rolls out. Jordan, the 92-93 season capped off seven straight scoring titles and three straight NBA championships. Just amazing success. And then he shocked the basketball world by deciding to retire prior to the next season. And on the court for Charlotte as we start the fourth. Curry is out there at Bogues. Then it's Johnson. Then it's Newman. And it's Morning in at the five down low. He's done a ton to help his team, guys, and he may have to do more if they're going to come back and win. Leans inside, and the bucket inside by the 6'11", Stacey King. Here's Bowes. Mark, they're looking now at a sizable deficit. Yeah, you know, they've got a lot of work ahead of them, but no reason to give up hope right now. No, the game's still out there for them, but they've got to get back to their game plan and start to grind out each possession. Here's Curry. And it's Chicago with the rebound. And for Michael Jordan, you know, you were talking about that, Steve. When he retired, he said he'd lost his passion for the game. And he played a lot of it. So three straight finals plus the dream team in the summer of 92. I'm not sure Clark, he was both physically and, and mentally exhausted. Yeah, I think so. And then the other part of the equation for him was he admitted that the tragic passing of his father earlier that year was a pretty significant factor as well. I mean, Jordan decided to pursue a career in baseball for a few years. It had been a dream of his dad's that he'd play in the majors, and I think it was a break that he needed from basketball, but also to try to fulfill that dream that his dad had, especially on the heels of his dad passing so tragically. Oh, come on. How do you miss that one? In. Hornets trail by yeah. 11. Guys, uh, they've been getting it done. They sure have been. I mean, really looking good and sharp offensively. They're knocking down the open oh, shots. Oh, wow. Really getting a nice flow. You're an achievement for that one. Swat and sway. Here's King. Here's Paxson. Offensive rebound. A second chance effort. No oh, on come on. They've got a chance to cut the deficit to within 10. Here's Curry. Shot tonight. The Bulls leading by 11. McCray passes to Williams. Bogues against Armstrong. But Trey, and that one's good. You know, guys, that's a shot B.J. Armstrong could always knock down. In one season, 92-93, he led the league in three-point percentage, shooting better than 45% from deep. Now, Muggsy Bogues played at Powerhouse Dunbar High in Baltimore, played alongside three future NBA players, including his Hornets teammate, David Wingate. And that team was ranked first in the nation at Dunbar, undefeated in Muggsy's junior and senior seasons. Charlotte calls timeout. 
You know, you mentioned that high school team that Muggsy Bogues played on, Steve. I mean, despite four future NBA players, Bogues was the MVP of that high school team. He also won a gold medal for the U.S. national team in 1986 and had a really good pro career, but also a distinguished amateur career. Catching up on the changes for Chicago. Will Purdue's check in for Williams. Grant comes in for King. Scotty Pippins checked in for McCray. And Michael Jordan subbed in for John Paxson. Now here's Williams. Morning backing down. How about the impact Alonzo Morning had right away, taking second overall in the 1992 draft. Average 21 points, 10 boards, and more than three blocks per game. Well, guys, you're talking about tremendous production from a first-year player at the center position. I mean, it's no wonder when he arrived, he vaulted the Hornets into playoff contention immediately. And the Bulls making a change here. Hartwright's checked in. Then for the Hornets, Johnson, he's checked in for Gaddison. Max Bogues in for Williams. Great hands down low. Gets the takeaway. From outside the arc, sharpshooter Del Curry hits the three. I like that. Run to the three-point line. Find a wide open shot. Clark, if they want to, they can milk the clock just a little bit here. Hey, Amen. I think that's the best option. Grant inside. Outside Jordan. Pocket six. A 10-footer gets it to go. And the Bulls lead by 13. They're looking good here, adding to this lead. Yeah, you know, time winding down here, the score and the clock clearly in their favor. Here's Johnson, rebound by Pippen. Terrific defense by Pippen, and that was a hallmark for him. He was a great defender, either on the ball or in the passing lanes. Gill against Armstrong, and it's off from three-point range. A very rough quarter. Oh! Well, that's a dunk you will not see very often. You won't pass that one by. No doubt about that. I wish he would, though. You can never see too many of those. Now, Jordan. Guarded by Kerr. Jordan against Curry. And it's going to be a 24-second shot clock violation. They turn it over. This gives them the opportunity to get within 10. Top of the key. Bogues, good. Here's Jordan. This game looks like they've got it just about wrapped up. You're exactly right. I mean, take care of the ball, work the clock. It's a wrap. Yep, nice game. by Kirk, and they'll turn it over. Could not get off a shot before second violation. On the Hornets call time here. Still win the game. I don't give a fuck. They trail by nine. Just two seconds left to play here in the fourth. Boy, put the hand farting again. Chicago winning this one. Yeah, they protected the finally one with this team. the Charlotte Hornets. No surprise there. Repeat NBA champs. And they're always tough on their home floor. The Hornets gave it their all, but came up short. Well, that'll do it for us for now. And the look at the Fuck you, Mugs and Bugs. Jordan. For Clark Kellogg Fuck and Steve you. Kerr, this is Kevin Harlan saying thanks for watching the NBA's greatest on 2K Sports.
seven steals. Holy shit. That's why I won this game. Fuck. Finally, we got a completed one. 